Now for this topic, we want to see how sample size and the margin of error and width are related. Now I put that and width in there because of course the margin of error and the width are very much the same thing, right? It's just the width is twice the margin of error. So that's because they're very closely related, right? So when you know about one, you know about the other. a little smiley face next to it. All right, so we are going to fill out this table. And I said with your calculator, but of course you could use um, StatCrunch as well. So I'm just gonna write using technology. Sorry, I'll fix that for future. So you can see in this table, I left X bar, the sample mean be the same throughout, S be the same throughout, but what I'm changing is sample size. And you can see that's why I made that portion gray. So you could kind of note that I was changing those values. And then the confidence level stays the same throughout. So I'm gonna find the confidence interval for mu, of course, because these are X bars and S's given to us. And then I'm gonna find the margin of error for all of those values. Now, even though we may be using StatCrunch to find these confidence intervals, I always find it helpful to kind of remember which kind of interval I'm doing. And I particularly like the calculator way of abbreviating it. So I'm looking for a T interval from you. All right, so I'm gonna find a whole bunch of them. <laughs> so you have a choice. You can use the calculator, it's fine. So if you go to Stat, Tests, T interval, it's number eight. And we're working from stats here. We don't have data, we have stats. Data is if you have a whole column of data, you know, with all sorts of numbers, which we do not have. So this would be 350, this would be a 100 sample size. And that's what's gonna change for every part. So I'm gonna do this once, I'm gonna write down the results, I'm gonna go back and do it again. Although the next time I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it with StatCrunch. <laughs> but, but I want you to see how this works. So 378.42. Now, if you want to continue with the calculator, press stat, tests, number eight, and then change that sample size to 150, and then repeat. Right, 150, go down to calculate and press enter. But I also want to show you how to do this in StatCrunch, which is probably what more of you are going to actually do. So let me go to StatCrunch really quickly. Close this. I'm actually going to shrink this window down because we don't need to see all of that. Right, what we need to see is stat, Oh, I guess I will leave it big for right now, just so you guys can see it. So stat, and then you're looking for T stat. Oh, there's stat, T stat, one sample. Now you don't have data, so it's the same choice you have to make on the calculator. So you have with summary. So you're gonna choose with summary, right? When you have summary statistics. Our sample mean was 350. Our sample standard deviation was 100 and our sample size was 50, and then we're gonna go down here to a confidence interval and choose point 90, or excuse me, confidence level, and choose point 95, which is fine, and click compute. And there is our confidence interval, right there. Same interval that the calculator came up with, 321.58, 378.42. Now, if you want to redo it in the in StatCrunch, you don't have to go back and go through all that rigmarole, all, I mean, although you can, stat, T stat, one sample with summary, you can do that. But you can also just go to here to options and click edit, and it'll take you right back. And then you can just change this to 150 and then click compute. And there we have it, 333.87, 366.13. All right, and I'm gonna go click edit again, <laughs> so edit. And then it would change for that last part to 250. So my sample size becomes 250. Click Compute. And I have 337.54 and then 362.46, right, if we round. All right, so there are all of those values. Now I need to find the margin of error. Let me write that formula again. The margin of error is the upper minus the lower divided by two, All right? That's that formula. I can even highlight it. And then we're using T interval here. Of course, 
that's not what it's called in the stat crunch, but I think it's helpful just to have a way to refer to it. It's the t-interval for the mean, which we know and love, right? All right, so for margin of error, I'm leaving my calculator up because I want to grab Desmos here. So for Desmos, if I just type division bar first, right, if I type divide, it makes the fraction for me. And then I can type 378.42 minus 321.58, and then arrow down and type 2. And I get that the margin of error is 28.42. So I'm just going to write it out for my own self. That way we know. I'm not going to write all of these. That's just silly. But I'm going to write the first one just so we can see it. So this one has a margin of error of 28.42. All right, now I could do it again. As a matter of fact, in Desmos, I can even copy and paste and then just change the numbers on the top. So that's an option. There we go. Oops, did I go backwards? I did. See, if it, see how it came out negative? It's actually the correct answer but I was being silly. You got to take the upper minus the lower, not the lower minus the upper. So 333.87. There we go. So it's 16.13 here. And then um, I'll show you the calculator just for some variety here. <laughs> so, um, but you can do the same thing with Asmos again if you want. So parentheses 362.46, take the upper number minus the lower number. Error can never be negative. That's how I knew I was in trouble. Right? Error is a distance, so it's always positive. And so 12.46. Hmm. So now we got to put this together. What's the moral of the story here? As we increase our sample size, right? As we increase from 50 to 150 to 250, look at what happens to the error. It shrinks, right? It's decreasing. So as n increases, and I'm gonna write that as, because that's what this is asking. Changing the sample size of, um, how does changing the sample size affect a confidence interval margin of error for the mean, right? Or proportion, right? It, it We did means here, but it would work the exact same way with proportions. So that's why I wrote or proportions right here, because even though we didn't do proportions in this particular page, it would work the same way. All right, so as sample size increases, so as sample size, which is n, increases, right, as it goes up, the margin of error decreases. Oh, and all other things are left alone. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that I increase the n, but I let the s and the x bar and the confidence level all stay the same, right? So everything else is left the same, but the sample size increases, right? So if you increase the sample size and everything else is left alone, then the error, um, I guess I should say the margin of error, that's what we're finding, right? Then the margin of error decreases. And if margin of error decreases, that means the width does too. Because they are very closely related, <laughs> right? This means that they're on a teeter-totter together. We already saw this, but I'll say it again. You have error on one side, you have sample size on the other side. If you raise your error, you lower your sample size and vice versa. What we just did on this page was the opposite. We actually raised our sample size, right? As we worked down that table, n was going up, and when n went up, the error went down, right? So, and I'm color coding those. The two green ones go together, and the two pink ones go together. Right? And they're on this like teeter-totter. Okay, so uh, um, how about this? Sample size, and error, and if error goes there, so goes width. So you could say error or width have an indirect relationship, have an inverse relationship. When one goes up, the other one goes down, and vice versa. Now I, I did skip it, but I'm coming back. Why does this happen? <laughs> Look at the formulas here, right here. 
Look at where sample size is in those formulas. Uh, sample size is in the denominator. So when the denominator gets larger, it makes the overall fraction, the overall error, because remember, this portion right here is the error, right? It's the margin of error. So when the n in that denominator gets larger, it makes the error smaller, right? Same thing over here. So n, right, which is the sample size, is in the denominator. of the error. Which I abbreviated with the letter E, right? So that margin of error E is that back portion after that plus or minus. The plus or minus is, this is the point estimate and the plus or minus is to build the interval. So this part right here is the error, the margin of error. N is in the denominator of that, right? And since so, when N increases, it makes the fraction, the overall fraction smaller, right? The overall error smaller. And vice versa, if you shrunk the sample size, then it would make the overall error larger, which is what we're putting down here on the teeter totter, right? When N goes up, error goes down. When N goes down, error goes up, vice and vice versa. Right, they have an inverse relationship. 